I'm Cleric Clarification. And I want to talk a little further about my video regarding homosexuality and femininity. I offended a number of people with that video. It wasn't my intention, um, but people are saying that, oh, you're being homophobic, you're being anti-gay. One person I said back, I said, uh, I am a gay man. And they're like, oh, well, you're just like someone who says something racist and then uh, follows it up with, uh, but I have a black friend, so it's cool. And I'm like, no, it's not like that. I am a gay man. You know, I'm not saying I have a gay friend, so uh, being homophobic is cool. And I don't think anything I said was homophobic. And I still stand by that. I don't see how anything I said in that video was actually homophobic. You know, there seems to be this notion that there are some things that we're not supposed to question. We're not supposed to analyze. You know, and I guess sexual orientation is something that uh, we're not supposed to analyze. Now, you might say, uh, say to me, well, doesn't analyzing it make you miserable? And uh, my response is, uh, not when there's something fruitful that comes out of it. But there's a number of things that I overanalyze about myself and make myself miserable for. But, you know, sometimes it can lead to important conversations. So, you know, just my analyzing why someone might be gay, why I'm gay, doesn't make me homophobic. It just makes me inquisitive. If people try to tell me I'm not supposed to analyze or question something, the first thing I'm going to automatically do is question and analyze the said thing. That's how I am. That's how I'm wired. Been that way my whole life. And so apparently what people are upset at is that I've suggested that there's also a nurture component to why someone might be gay. Um, I've, I've confirmed that there's a nature element, obviously. I think obviously, you know. If the genetics aren't there, or the epigenetic situation, you know, isn't there, then it doesn't matter how someone gets raised. It's not, you're, it's not going to make someone who was born straight, straight, straight. It's not going to make someone gay. Now, the different way someone's raised can make someone either homophobic or not homophobic, but it's not going to make someone gay. I'm saying that there's a, there's a possibility that a lot of people are born bi, but their life experiences the way they were raised, things that they've experienced in school, things they've been exper that they've experienced in life in general, might have made them gravitate more towards being just gay. And uh, and I don't think there's there's anything extreme about my stating that. I don't think it's an extreme statement. I don't think it's an anti-gay statement. Um. You know, now, now one of the reasons why I wonder so much about whether the way someone is raised could change that is because I've, I've wondered for so long whether or not I might have been bi if I would have been raised differently. Okay, first off, I didn't have a father figure. I, did, I didn't have a father. And the only person that, uh, that, I, that I was close to that... I could analyze their behavior was my brother, and I was told that my brother was a terrible person from, from an early age. Oh, don't listen to him. Don't go by him. He's, he's terrible. Right? And he, he didn't have the greatest intentions. He was quite... He could be quite nasty, but... Uh, um. But yeah, I was always looking for some sort of father figure. I, I didn't, 
I didn't, when I was a kid, I didn't know that's what I was looking for. I just knew that I craved someone to show me what is it, what are, what are positive things about what being masculine it is, masculine is. What are the positive things about what being a man is? You know, how can I reach my, my best potential as a man and still treat people decently? You know, and I never, I never got that. You know, my mother tried to get uh, a, a big brother. There, there's this, they have big brothers, big sisters, uh, people who will help mentor kids and they didn't, they, that she signed up for it and she, they didn't get anyone available to help me until I was like 17. And by then it was kind of late, right? My mother tried. She knew she wasn't really very good at teaching, uh, you know, how to be masculine. She had no idea how to teach that. So, yeah, I really had to grasp at straws to figure out what it is. Um... But, uh, no, the other thing, the other element is, uh, when I, uh, I went to Sunday school and I can't remember how old I was, maybe nine, maybe 10. Um, they separated the boys from the girls and, uh, they did these very specific, uh, uh, Lessons. They, they, and I'm not sure if this was actually a passage from the Bible or whether it's one of the one of these stories that they say is based off of biblical, uh, the the morals from the Bible. I don't know which it was, but there's this story of some guy who uh, there, there's a woman that was taking a shower under a fire uh, a fire, <laughs> over, 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 <laughs> under a waterfall. Yes, under a fire hydrant. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and they were talking about how, you know, the, uh, um, for a man to lust after a woman is wrong. It's, it's sinful. It's, uh, you know, you shouldn't do it. And they went on about that for like 20 minutes. And then the last 10 minutes, it was, uh, uh, testing us, you know, making us answer the questions as to, you know, why was it wrong to, uh, for uh for him to have lust after a woman right and you know i that that kind of stuck with me now i never associated myself with the word gay until i was 16 um you know until then i mean i didn't I would sometimes get aroused by something I'd see in like National Geographic or something, you know. Um, I had a weird uh, mud fetish of sorts. I had this thing where I, uh, the, the notion of sinking in mud uh, would give me an erection, right? Kind of weird. Um, I Man, it's just embarrassing to say this, but might as well. Um I was so disconnected from other kids that uh oftentimes during recess um well let's see, I should explain this first. Um in gym class in elementary school, um, what, how old was I when this when this happened? Um, probably eight. Um, they brought these ropes down from the from, from the really tall ceiling, right? Brought these ropes down and wanted to see who could climb up to the top and back down. And uh, barely anyone was able to do it. I I was able to climb up to the top, but by the time I reached the top, I had ejaculated, and I didn't know what that meant, and uh, I just knew, oh, that felt really good. And it was from the notion of moving my legs when I was climbing the rope. And, 
But uh, yeah, and people saying, oh, great, you know, they, they were... They were surprised. They thought someone like me wouldn't have been able to climb up to the top, but I had no problem with it. But ever since then, you know, uh, you know, well, after that, I shouldn't say ever since then, but uh, after that, I wanted to see if there was some way I could uh, re-experience that. So I would uh, purposely try to climb the 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 pole on the, on the uh, the the playground area back when they actually had you know decent playgrounds back before they 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 look like giant giant toddler toys right um now there's this really tall not really tall but reasonably tall pole that i would make it look like i'm trying to climb and uh i would end up spending a lot of my recesses uh doing that not realizing what it looked like to anyone else but I was so disconnected from everyone else that, you know, what difference did it make? I was also the kid, uh, I tried to do everything that I was told, and I took the, uh, uh, when I would get bullied, um, I would tattletale. I, I was the kid who'd say, who would say, I'm telling... I'm that kid. I'm un- I was unfortunately that kid. And I cringe at so much of it. But I didn't know any better. I just tried to do what the Sunday school teachers taught and what the church taught and what my mother taught and what the teachers in, in regular public school would teach, the little moral lessons they'd teach and just try to do everything by that. Because... Uh, well, the, the whole Jesus story never made any sense to me. You know, the, 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 the element of uh, uh, all of your sins are forgiven, but if you just pray to this person, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. I, uh, you know, what, what was that comedian who said, oh, I, I stubbed my toe on my, sh- on my shovel for your mortgage, right? It, it, the, the whole Jesus died for your sins thing just doesn't make much sense. So... I mainly looked at the religion from a perspective of, well, I guess I just have to make sure that I never sin. And so um, that's how I that's how I tried to do everything. So you know, yeah, I was the I'm telling kid, and uh, yeah, I. I it, the times I had to worry was after school. I would often have to run home from school, not just walk. I, I lived really close, so it's not like a big thing. Um, but I couldn't just walk home from school. I had to run because uh, bullies would often chase me. Because, you know, they get together because uh, uh, I got them in trouble because I was the I'm telling kid, right? So... But I knew that uh, I sure didn't want to act the way those bullies acted, you know. And, you know, later when I got to middle school and high school, the people that had, that still had kind of a bullying type of mindset, I would also see treating women, treating girls like shit. You know, forcing themselves on them, that sort of thing. And I, so I continued this mindset of, well, I don't want to be like that. I, I didn't connect being gay, myself to being gay until I was 16. And then I came out of the closet at 17. But and it was only until around the time that I came out that I started understanding all of the negative connotations that society had at the time to what being gay is. You know, I mean, I knew that people would use gay and, and the, uh, the F word, uh, towards gay people. And, uh, and sissy and, and all, I, I knew I knew the negative, you know, associations with those things, but I didn't have some of these, uh, oh, you're an abomination, um, you're a, 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 
I don't know, your, your, your existence is against God. Um, you're a terrible human being just for existing. You know, I didn't get that until, you know, until around the time I came out. And so then I had to start fighting against those types of, of ideas. And, uh, but all of that time, all of that time, I was still craving a father figure. I was craving a father figure up until, uh, you know, my late thirties, quite honestly, still someone, someone to show me what it is to be a man. What are ways I can be proud to be a man that isn't hurtful to people? I guess even to this day, you know, I, I, I wonder, you know, when it comes to the standard narratives that are out there now, you know, what, what, can some, what can a man be proud of for being masculine that doesn't have a bunch of negative, negative connotations now? What can they be proud of? You know, I'm supposed to be proud to be gay. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of homophobia to fight against in society still. You know, so we have to sort of take pride so we're not hurt by people as easily. You know, we have to stand up against actual homophobia. But if we're at a point where we're not even allowed to question what makes someone gay? What are the causes of someone being gay? If we're at if we we're at that point, we we've kind of we went a little too far. Maybe we're going to have to back up just a little bit and try to be a little more rational and logical about this whole thing. So as I've said, I don't see anything homophobic about my video that I made about that. Um Maybe you do. I don't know. But, uh... I guess I don't know what more to say. Thanks for watching.